They are products or services which people are willing to pay thousands of dollars for in order to help them out. But when you narrow down too far, it cuts out your ability to be a high ticket closer. Okay? Even though we may be passionate about a niche and we enjoy solving that problem, we cannot force it to be a high ticket product or service. In order for a niche that you want to get into, in order for it to be viable as a high ticket closer, there needs to be high ticket packages. If there's no high ticket packages and there's no demand for them, it's gonna be really difficult to make really solid money Hey, UCM fan, hopping on another live, second one today, um, but an important topic that I think is going to be helpful for a lot of people, and that's how to and how to not pick your niche, okay? Now, ultimately, we have to kind of go back in understanding what a niche is, because I think a lot of people have a lot of difficulty as it comes to figuring out, oh, what's their niche, what they gonna be passionate about, what they wanna get into, all that, okay? And oftentimes, they're overcomplicating the process as it comes to that. So first off, what's a niche? A niche simply is a specific group of people that have similar traits and similar problems. That's what a niche is. Now, there's really four main industries that solve general problems for groups of people. And you've probably heard JD and myself talk about this before. It's health, wealth, fitness, and happiness. Now, those are the four industries in which there are lots of high ticket offers, which high ticket closers, that's you, are able to sell. Now, a lot of problems that I see with individuals running into when they're picking out a niche is they, they pick something that they're hyper specific and um, hyper passionate about. So for example, that could be nutrition, that could be video games, um, that could be um, something specific that goes down to like uh, mothering and parenting, right? Like hyper specific niches. Now, it's important to be able to narrow down, you know, people and problems and figure out what you're passionate about, what you want to help about. But when you narrow down too far, it cuts out your ability to be a high ticket closer. Okay. So what does a high ticket closer do? They close high ticket packages. What are high ticket packages? They are products or services, which people one want and two are willing to pay thousands of dollars for in order to help them out. Okay. And so oftentimes people will narrow down into a niche in which they narrow down into a problem or something they're passionate about that people that aren't in high demand or two are willing to pay thousands of dollars for. So for example, we've been talking with, with Matt in the group and he's really interested in, in nutrition. The issue is, is that people aren't willing to pay thousands of dollars for nutrition advice and help, or even for nutrition certifications to become a nutritionist. Or not. I mean, people just, there isn't a demand for that that much. And so he's been spending a lot of time doing research for a niche that doesn't allow him to get into that. And you can find that out really quickly, like a quick couple Google searches, you know, and you can find that, that nutrition you know, isn't in high demand and it's, it's going to be really hard to do that. And so that's one way of not to pick a niche is that we cannot force a niche to give us the opportunities that we're looking for. So for example, we cannot, even though we may be passionate about a niche and we enjoy solving that problem, we cannot force it to be a high ticket product or service. If it's not a high ticket or product or service, you might as well just throw it out. There's no point in pursuing that any further. There's no one you can search online. You can spend hours and hours researching to never find it. And oftentimes people spend so much time in doing research in trying to find something that's not there. And that's, I think, what causes people to spend a lot of time as it comes to figuring out and trying to pick a niche. I think that's a big issue there. Um, but, and that's not the only example. I've seen several people in the UCM, though he's the most recent example, especially because he just asked a question about it. So we need to find a balance, right? And, and, and kind of go back, right? So like, let's say, for example, with Matt, he's like, I really want to get into nutrition because it's passionate about something I like. What we want to do is we deconstruct the dream. We need to ask, well, why am I interested in nutrition? Well, it's something I know a lot about. Or it may be something I really enjoy helping men and women with their health, right? And it's like, now that I want to help men and women with their health opens up more doors to what's possible, right? So now that opens up the doors to, well, are there other ways I can help men and women with their health? Certainly. Are there fitness programs that are high ticket to help people lose weight, you know, um, develop their bodies the way they want? Yes. And so now we can then do research amongst that. That's a niche that is viable in this space. Not all niches are viable in this space. And I think that's something that's huge that people need to realize is that in order for a niche that you want to get into, in order for it to be viable as a high ticket closer, there needs to be high ticket packages. And there's no high ticket packages and there's no demand for them. It's going to be really difficult to make really solid money in this space. So I know for me, it's, it's kind of, it's been easier because I've been interested in the wealth niche. And so I'm interested in helping people improve and increase their wealth. And so people are willing to pay thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars to increase their wealth. And as a closer, I can step into that niche and help with the process. So 
Um, as it comes to picking a niche, just to kind of you know bring this back together, um, how to pick a niche, right? We just need to identify specific groups of people that we want to be able to help. And then we identify the, pe the top people that are helping with that. So for example, I want to help female um, females with starting an online business. That is, that is a niche, right? And then we want to identify the top people in that. Or I want to help men with improving their health, right? That's a niche. We can identify the top people in that. How not to choose a niche, right? Is forcing a niche that is just not possible to be high ticket. Um, it's if you, if you spend 20 to 30 minutes and cannot find the top individuals in that niche, you've probably figured out there's not going to be a lot of opportunity for you as a high ticket closer. You can't force it. And then lastly, you can pick more than one. I think that's another big one, right? You can pick, just pick a niche. Like if there's multiple ones, you have SaaS or if it's lead generation or if it's Facebook marketing or it's, uh, you know, social media marketing, or there could be a bunch of niches. Just choose one, just choose one, go down that path, get into it. If you don't like it, you can always pivot and move to another one. That's the beauty of networking and, and this industry. For me, when I like listen to my story, as it comes to going through and all these different niches, I started out in real estate, then went to consumer tech, and then I went to CBD and then I went to smoothies and then I went to uh, helping build wedding photography businesses. Then I went to business scaling and then now I'm in education, right? I, I went through all these different niches, right? But I was helping people solve problems and I was learning as I went and then I could always pivot to one. If I didn't really like one, I also did credit repair. Sorry, that was another one that was in there. I could always pivot and move on to another one because I had that network developed, okay? So feel free to ask any questions down below. Um, appreciate y'all, love y'all, keep crushing it.